Thank you for your introduction. So my name is Bruno Quatta. Uh, I'm uh, with the IP Networking Lab uh, in University of Louvain in Belgium. And uh, I will present some work we have done uh, with a tool called CBGP. And we applied it to, to model some aspects of uh, the routing in a NISP. And this is a joint work with uh, Sébastien Tandel, Steve Ulick, and Olivier Bonaventure. So a short uh, agenda, uh, first motivate the work, then uh, give a brief overview of the simulator's feature, and uh, show how we, we apply it on uh, GEAN, which is the European uh, Research and Education Network. So why would you want to, to model your network? Uh, with another tool than uh, current capacity planning tool? Well, it's uh, a lot about the entitlement traffic and uh, BGP. So it's difficult to, to predict the impact of uh, the, a link failure or change in uh, your routing policies or the addition or removal of, uh, of a peering link on your interdomain traffic. Another question is how can I uh, adjust all the parameters of my network, so BGP policies and so on, in order to reduce my cost, in order to increase my performance, or in order to increase the reliability of my network? So these are the, the questions we are trying to, to, to answer. So, uh, in my understanding, this is the view that traditional capacity planning tool have of an ISP network. So it's pretty like a, a, an isolated uh, island, uh, not really taking into account what happens uh, outside of your network. But the reality is uh, much more complex. So you have uh, transit traffic, multiple egresses, uh, maybe a complex IBGP uh, structure in your network, including route reflectors, even multiple le levels of route reflectors. Uh, there are a lot of destinations, so uh, around uh, 215,000 different prefixes in, uh, in BGP routing tables. And you also have the interaction between an IGP protocol, ISIS or OSPF, and, and BGP. So uh, understanding what is going on uh, in, a, in an ISP network seems to be pretty hard uh, and certainly too much for a human brain. <laughs> so uh, we have developed a tool called CBGP that is able to compute the routes that BGP would have selected in a, in a, in a network based on the knowledge of the topology and the Route, router configurations. Uh, CBGP supports uh, most of the BGP distribution process, so uh, local pref, AS path length, MED, uh, and other things. Uh, it can be uh, configured with uh, different routing policies, so uh, tagging routes with communities, uh, prepending AS paths, uh, etc. It is able to uh, read uh, BGP routes that you would have collected on uh, your border routers and, and uh, you can inject them in, into the model. And it's, it's free. It's an open source tool written in, uh, in C. And we have currently applied it on uh, three different networks, Abilene and Jean, and uh, also a French tier one network. So the, our basic methodology is as follows. So first we have to capture some data into, into the network uh, to build a, a view of the topology. We also have to, to collect information on the BGP sessions, the route maps, et cetera. Uh, and with that we build the, the, the CBGP model. With one view of the, of the model we can compute the, what we call the routing state that is all the routes towards all the prefixes in each router uh, in the model. Then we can play with the model 
We can change the state of a link in the topology, change IGP weights, we can change uh, route filters, add uh, or remove routes, and see uh, what other routing states uh, we can obtain uh, after the changes. And then we can compare all these routing states uh, in order to, to, to figure what's going on. In addition, we, we are also able to, to weight these uh, routes with uh, traffic collected with NetFlow, for instance. This is just a sample of uh, the output you could get from uh, CBGB, so it's based on a uh, model of the Abilene network. And the command shown here just uh, display the different steps of the decision process uh, on a single router towards a single destination prefix. So let's go to the uh, case study. So Géant is a, a network with uh, POPs in uh, all the, the European capitals. Um, so there are around, uh, I think, 23 nodes. Got more information here. 38 call links and 53 peering links. And among these peering links, six are with uh, upstream providers. So we have obtained the, the Géant topology based on an ISI trace. Uh, we, have, we have obtained BGP routing data uh, from uh, a Zebra collector uh, connected uh, with IBGP sessions to all the uh, uh, routers in Géant. So we collected all the, e, the, the, the current best eBGP routes. And in addition, we also get uh, NetFlow data. So the first uh, scenario I'm going to show you is a scenario where we inve investigated the addition and removal of peering links. So on the example shown on the slide, we would like to know uh, what will happen to our traffic if, you, if we are peering with a, a new uh, neighbor Z and the seahorse, the, the traffic will be uh, spread over the, the network and over the peering links. Uh, so, uh, in the next slide, I'll uh, show two different kinds of experiments. One where we have added uh, a full BGP routing tables at different locations in the network in order to simulate the addition of a new peering and scenarios uh, where we have removed the, the routes previously learned from an existing peering. And the metric here is the distribution of the traffic over the different uh, upstream, the, the different links with the upstream providers. So this is a simplified view of Géant. Uh, on the top of the figure, you, you see this, the six uh, peering links that we will consider with their uh, load of outgoing traffic. And we are going to remove PR1 to PR4 and then add uh, new peerings uh, on uh, routers R1, R8, etc. And that's the kind of output we can obtain. So on the x-axis, you have the different scenarios. The first one is a default state. On the y-axis, you see the fraction of traffic that is, that is carried by uh, the, the six upstream uh, peering links. So in the default case, you can see that the traffic load is uh, already highly uh, unevenly distributed. So uh, PR2 here carries 50% uh, of the, the outgoing traffic. So now uh, in the red scenarios where we remove uh, a peering link, we can see, uh, for, for example, the Dell PR2 uh, example. Here in this case, we remove the, the link with uh, PR2, and we can see that another peering link now carries uh, all the load previously carried by uh, the link with PR2. So it's something difficult to predict uh, by hand. 
in the case of uh, the addition of peering, we can see in the case of the addition of uh, peering with R1 that the, the new peering link will, will uh, take all the traffic uh, that uh, previously went out through PR2. And uh, well, so you can, you can see that for different, uh, different scenarios. Second experiment we have done is uh, investigate what will happen when uh, internal links will fail and how the, the traffic will be uh, redistributed. And also uh, how many routing changes each link failure can cause uh, in, inside my network. Here we have classified each routing change uh, according to uh, what's shown on the slide. So uh, we have looked at uh, routing changes that just change the reachability of uh, destination. So uh, in this class, we will sh see prefixes that uh, were reachable before the link failure at, and that are not reachable anymore. Uh, peer, change, peer change uh, are uh, roads that are uh, going out through another AS. Egress change is still through the same AS, but uh, through an, another egress router. And then we, all, we have uh, in intradomain uh, routing changes. So this is just a summary here. On the x-axis, you have all the link failures. And on the y-axis, you have all the routing changes, and the colors indicate uh, the, 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 the class of the, the routing change. So what, what we can observe here is that a single link failure can cause more than 500,000 routing changes, so it's accumulated over all the routers in the network. That's the first observation, and a second observation is that most routing changes are changes uh, at the intelligent level. So these are peer changes and egress changes, not only uh, changing uh, b between, uh, well, so things that wouldn't be seen by uh, traditional capacity planning tools. So uh, as a conclusion, we have a tool that can be useful uh, for you to try to predict the impact of various changes or events inside your, your network on your BGP routing or uh, your traffic. We have applied it to, to uh, uh, three different networks. We'd like to apply it to other networks, so if uh, you are interested in the tool, do not hesitate to contact us. And we, we would like to to uh, tell you, but uh, I'm sure you know, that many of the changes that are caused in network are intermain changes. That's why the modeling tools uh, that, that you use should take into account uh, BGP routing. We have some direction for further work. Uh, try to predict the impact on the inbound traffic, but that we, we need uh, a better view uh, on the uh, on the internet topology. Uh, we also had to the the tool uh, support for uh, BGP and PLS VPNs, and uh, one way to compute more accurate failover matrices that were proposed by uh, Thomas Telkamp from uh, Caridan. So that's all. Thank you for your attention.